Why? By who? Lieutenant. McAfee. I just got a call. We have a different judge. Is that good news or bad news? I'm not sure. We'll see. All rise! All those having interest in this general court martial, stand forth and you shall be heard. Please be seated. This session is called to order. Captain Reitz, I see you request a trial by judge alone. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. If I approve your request for trial by judge alone, you give up your right to be tried by a court composed of members. Do you understand that? Yes, Your Honor. And you still wish to be tried by me alone? Yes, Your Honor. Your request is approved. Court is assembled. Bailiff, please place the cues under oath. Captain Reed, please come to the stand and face me. Do you solemnly swear that the testimony you're about to give in this general court martial is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, under pains and penalty of perjury? I do. Captain, would you please tell the court what your relationship to the prince was? I was head of special security detail. Sorry, you said you were head of a special security detail? Aren't you an active duty officer in the United States military? Yes, I am. Then why exactly were you providing special security to the prince? That's classified information, Lieutenant. Classified. Might I remind you, Captain, that you are under oath? I am well aware of my oath. Then at this time, Your Honor, I'd like you to instruct the defendant to answer the question. Objection! Lieutenant Eldridge is well aware of Captain Reed's status with Special Operations, and any information deposed in this court concerning a classified operation could pose a threat to national security. Your objection is noted, but I'll allow it. However, I will ask the defendant to only answer with details relating directly to the questions asked, and refrain from providing details about his operational status. Thank you, Your Honor. Now, if you were still on active duty at the time of the murder, obviously... Nobody must have assigned you to protect the press, is that correct? Yes, it is. And who exactly was it that assigned you to protect the press? That's classified information. Your Honor, please. Captain, you must answer the lieutenant's question. I did. And who are you, sir? I'm Colonel Nathan Anderson. I'm Captain Reed's commanding officer. Your Honor, I'd like to call Colonel Anderson in the stand. Objection. This witness was not on the list. He was not made available to the defense during discovery, and we've not had the time to properly prepare for cross-examination. Well, seeing as how the Colonel's made it a point of intervening in this trial, I will allow him to take the stand. And at this time, I would like to excuse Captain Reeves, but reserve the right to recall at a later time. Captain, you may step down. Bailiff, place the Colonel under oath. I do. <clears throat> would you state your name, rank, and current billet for the record, please? Colonel Nathan Anderson, United States Army Special Forces, Fort Bragg, North Carolina. Thank you, sir. Now, we'd like to clarify precisely why Captain Reeds was at the scene of the murder. Is it your testimony that as his commanding officer, you assigned Captain Reeds to provide special security services to the prince? That is correct. Why would the United States military assign a special forces operative to provide security to a civilian foreign national. Interdepartmental cooperation concerning the immediate safety of a high-valued foreign national. Special forces acting as security to a high-value foreign national? Yes, under directive. 
by himself. No, the prince had his own bodyguards as well. And what made the prince so valuable to the United States government? Uh, that information was not disclosed to me. Is it your testimony that you are unaware of the information contained in the documents carried by the prince? Yes, it is. I was not informed of the intelligence contained in the documents or the business of the prince. The directive given to Captain Reeds was to provide protective services, observe and eliminate any potential threats. Are you also saying that Captain Reeds was not aware of the information contained in the documents in question? Objection. Pause for speculation. The same. So, explain to me how this works. Can a Saudi prince just call up the United States military, ask for one of our best, and use him as some kind of personal bodyguard? Seems more like a job for Blackwater or maybe some other kind of private security firm, don't you think? We all work for the DOD. We're in communication with every agency needed and coordinate our efforts for maximum results and effectiveness. Agencies, for instance, CIA? In this case, yes. Why would the CIA need a United States military operative's unknowing involvement in the Prince's deals? In this case, unethical deals, but I digress. Objection. Objection sustained. Colonel, why the military? Credentials, easier cooperation with international defense agencies, and access to military intelligence and resources if needed. An all-access path. It gives us a number of strategic advantages. I understand, Colonel. So, none of you knew about the Prince's business, who he was meeting, or the nature of his deals. That is correct. When we're ordered to protect a high-valued individual that's important to our national security, we're ready to help out. That is our job. Unfortunately, sometimes we're given incorrect or false information even by our very own sources. I see. I see. How did you first meet Captain Reeds? And what can you tell the court about his character? His adoptive parents were friends of mine, and sadly, they passed away. Captain Reeds had an interest in joining the military, so when he was around 17 years old, we discussed various options. He signed up, joined the Army Rangers Special Forces. He was deployed in Iraq, Afghanistan, and Somalia. In fact, he ran many covert missions under my command. He's currently one of the best that our country has, and he's done an incredible job for his country. Thank you, Colonel. Your Honor, this time we have no further questions for Colonel Anderson. We'd like to recall Captain Reeds of the stand. Colonel, you may step down. Captain, you understand you're still under oath. Yes, Your Honor. Captain, would you please recapitulate for the court your version of the events that took place that night? Yes, Lieutenant. I was outside a door, standing guard as usual. And it was happening all over again. Every night, the same story. A little girl was just crying louder and louder. And so was her mother. I, I couldn't take it anymore. And then the hotel bodyguards came rushing in. Thank you, Captain. Your Honor, this time we have no further questions for Captain Reeds. Captain, you may step down. In light of the hour, we will recess for two hours for lunch. We will reconvene at 1330 hours. All right. Colonel. I'd like to speak with you privately in my chambers.
It's a really fascinating reading, Colonel. Afghani villagers dig a baby out from under a bombed out building. And they take the baby to a nearby village for medical attention, but there's no doctor there. Instead, they find an American operative named Reeds. Now don't worry, it gets better. Reeds takes the baby to Germany, then flies back to Kabul, and a few weeks later, Reeds is killed in action. The baby recovers and is placed in a German orphanage until he's 10. Gets adopted by a U.S. military couple and moves to Virginia. And he meets you at a karate championship. Is that convenient? What happened to his biological parents? He looks more European than Afghani, isn't he? Russian, maybe? We're not sure. Uh, we think they got killed in the bombing. Interesting. Well, he's had a remarkable record up until now. Purple Heart, Distinguished Service Cross. Then he goes and kills two men. One with one punch to the face. A hell of a way to end a career. You have to understand, Your Honor, he was just doing his job. He was protecting the mother and child. I agree. Unfortunately, my sympathy only goes so far. Saudis are very, very upset. The State Department's breathing down our backs, and I've even been told by the president it'd be in my best interest to figure a way out of this and save face for everyone. This issue with the World Bank and the CIA is just dissolved into a total mess. So this is what I'm gonna do. He will be reprimanded, demoted, and he will do 30 years of disciplinary bearing for manslaughter. And I'm sure the media will chew him up. This court martial is adjourned. Bailiff, escort Captain Reeds out of this courtroom, please. And I'm sure the media will chew him up. And two weeks later, when it becomes old news and nobody cares anymore, you go pick him up. And you will make him disappear anywhere you want. And you will be reporting to me directly about him once a month. And depending on the president, we'll open the case again, and we will get him a new identity. Sounds like a plan, Your Honor. Thank you.